<clears throat> yes, come. You can sit down here. I have a joint market token. <laughs> So, <coughs> why are you here? Why are you here in this very room? It's because you feel like there is something in the air. A revolution is brewing. The single largest revolution of your lifetime. And that's the revolution of money. I think we, we can all agree here that that one of the cryptocurrency is going to be the next cryptocurrency of the future, uh, the, the next reserve currency of humanity. And we probably have a consensus that this cryptocurrency is going to be none other but Bitcoin itself. So you are here to take a part in this revolution, to make Bitcoin a better money. But what does it mean? How do you make Bitcoin a better money? What is money? Well, we can look at the science that is examining this question, and that science is economics. So, my favorite theory is the properties of good money, and I'm not going to talk much about that. I talked a lot about that previously, but it all boils down to three things which our Bitcoin is not yet perfect in. That three things is incidentally corresponds to the research literature of Bitcoin privacy because guess what? Bitcoin privacy literature is not all about privacy. Privacy is easy if you don't care about block space. So we have three properties here. That is security, fungibility, and portability. I want to walk you through the entire history of Bitcoin privacy history, but I want to do this in a more systematic way. And I'm going to establish those things right now. So security is a generalization of the durability property, but Bitcoin wallets don't tend to ruin durability, so I'm not going to talk about that. But we have to account for, for a couple of other things in security, which is not your keys, not your coins. <laughs> not your coins. So non-custodiality, right? Very, very important. Second, don't trust. Verify. Verify. So you should run a full node. That's very, very important. You should validate. And then there is this question or tension between Hardware versus software. What do you want to handle your keys, your money? It's probably, probably not software. Software is soft. Hardware is classified software. So you want to have a more trusted way of, of, of doing your money. And that's where hardware wallets come in. That's about security. Now portability. Portability is about how fast and how cheap you can communicate value to another person. So how do you scale a blockchain? You don't. Blockchains are inherently unscalable. And that's where the Lightning Network comes in. Okay. Now, let's talk about fungibility. There are these three basic um, terminology that's very often used interchangeably, and that's okay but I'm not going to do that now. Anonymity is a mathematical tool that you can use to build privacy for the individual. Privacy is your ability to selectively reveal yourself to the world. And private Bitcoin wallets or adoption to, of private Bitcoin technologies lead to fungibility of a currency where fungibility also called in, in distinguishability, inter-exchangeability, homogeneity. It's about two units of currency. They should be, there should be no differentiating factor between them other than the amount itself. There should be no marks on a coin. There should be no histories of UTXOs. That's, that's fungibility. So 
on the privacy dimension, I am scaling, uh, scoring Bitcoin wallets from point of view of who knows what. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, on the one extent, there is complete anonymous Bitcoin wallet. On the other extent, there is completely transparent Bitcoin wallet. And in the middle, there is a Bitcoin wallet where, where, where there is a central third party, a trusted third party that knows what's going on in your Bitcoin wallet, but at least your neighbors don't. However, this is not a silver lining here because that centralizes power into the hands of a few in terms of knowledge. So that's how I'm going about it. And finally, so down there, there is Wasabi Wallet 1.0. Up there, there is Wasabi Wallet 2.0. I stole this meme from the Monero guys, so shout out for them. <laughs> they did down their Bitcoin and up their Monero. <laughs> but what they are pointing here is, is something very, very important. It is friction, because ultimately, all we want to do here is to enable the user to communicate value to another person. And every friction that we put in their way, making that Bitcoin wallet a worse Bitcoin wallet. It's all about sending and receiving. That's, that's what we want to let people do as easily as they can. Don't make me think. Another major source of friction that I identified is you should be running, you should be using a light wallet because that's so much easier, that's so much faster, so much everything. But now we have a problem because I just said full nodes are very important and now I'm saying light wallets are very important. So, so we have a big, big problem, but don't worry. In a moment, I will show you how we can think away that problem. <laughs> and now I'm going to present to you the entire Bitcoin privacy history based on the, the properties of good Bitcoin wallets. Privacy, security, portability, and friction. We started with Bitcoin Core in 2009, right? Um, security, non-custodial, and a full node. All right, uh, portability. I am defining the standard portability as Bitcoin Core, so that's, that's the standard for me, so it gets me, gets a Bitcoin, Bitcoin orange badge. And then it didn't really get in the way of the user of sending and receiving money, so that's pretty cool. On the privacy, we, for a long time, we thought that there might be some privacy on Bitcoin Core, but ultimately, I think it turned out to be a knowledge blindness, and maybe that even prevails today, but I would classify it as a transparent wallet, like people know what you're doing with your wallet. Um, before I go forward, I go very, very forward into 2077 and have a moonshot, trying to extrapolate existing technologies to, <clears throat> to, to build a perfect Bitcoin wallet. On the privacy level, it's completely anonymous. Uh, we use stored underlying value shuffle confidential transactions uh, and, and uh, coin joins. On the security level, it's non-custodial hardware wallet, full node on portability. It's using cross-input signature aggregation, bullet proofs, lightning network. Something very interesting here is that this setup is actually, if you use this setup, it's cheaper than using normal Bitcoin transactions. So that's the holy grail of Bitcoin privacy. But then it's a full node and it's a light wallet as well. So how, how, how is that possible? Well, in the future, computation is going to be getting much, much cheaper. Terabytes of data gonna be nothing. So maybe all we have to do to get fully validating light wallets is to wait. Next. In 2011, Bitcoin wallet became the first light wallet. It's, it's also called the shield back wallet because Bitcoin wallet is an interesting name for a Bitcoin wallet. But 
in 2011, that was okay, I think. So it's, it was the first slide for that. Oops. Something very interesting here. This wallet is only using a single address for every single thing that you're doing, for a single address. Yet, you can see that I gave the same privacy score to the Bitcoin wallet as to Bitcoin Core. It's because I'm taking a bird eye point of view, right? Like 10 minutes presentation, that's uh, uh, much time. There is like a, a lot of difference in privacy, but ultimately they are both transparent to, to an outside observer. So the next iteration was actually the very first privacy improvement where centralized mixers, they created confidentiality for the first time of the history of Bitcoin, but they compromised an oh, shitload of other properties, right? Like, huh, it's not good. And most importantly, security. That's one of the things that Bitcoin privacy research is focusing on very heavily. They were able to steal your money and they were able to de-anonymize you. But that was a milestone. Next, shared coin from blockchain info. Who heard about shared coin here? Hmm, interesting. That was widely popular, hugely popular Bitcoin wallet. It was the first coin join implementation that was used. Um, so it improved upon centralized mixers that it now was not able to steal your money. However, it was still confidential because blockchain info users were sending their extended public keys to the servers of blockchain info. And an extended public key is your entire financial history. So you were not very private against blockchain info, right? Anyhow, finally, for the first time in Bitcoin privacy history, Join Market has delivered an anonymous Bitcoin wallet. This is, in my opinion, the single largest milestone of Bitcoin privacy. This was huge. <sighs> it compromised a lot of friction though, <laughs> but that's okay. So non-custodial and full node. Interestingly, even blockchain info was sending extended uh, blockchain. Join market was sending extended public keys in early days to broker IO, but uh, the developers quickly realized their mistake and now it's a full node only. So I can say that it's an anonymous Bitcoin wallet. And then 2018, my project came around Wasabi Wallet 1.0. It was the first light wallet that enabled anonymous Bitcoin usage experience, right? You, you can see that it's it's like it's like um, one step backwards, two step forwards, right? Like there are more. We we compromised on the security, right? Like it's not a full node anymore, like could join market was, but. It's a, it's a light wallet, so more people were able to use Bitcoin anonymously. Now, yesterday I was on a panel and some of you guys have mentioned that I failed to mention a specific project. And don't worry, I got you covered now. So you got what you asked for. So. In 2019, Samurai Wallet compromised all the privacy compared to previous Bitcoin wallets because it was a confidential Bitcoin wallet. Samurai Wallet was in existence since 2015. It just had no privacy. It just advertised itself as a privacy wallet. But anyway, so it is just like blockchain info sending the extended public keys to the Samurai server. Fun fact, they were doing they were sending it to blockchain info previously. So, <sighs> a no bojo is not saving you because, <sighs> because you can't be anonymous by yourself. You have no idea who you are mixing with, probably with default <coughs> users. Anyway, that's a little detour. So it's also missing dark wallet, no? Um, so, actually, shared coin, 
shift coin came out previously and and I couldn't like put dark wallet because I mean yeah sure I put Samurai wallet in there even though we didn't improve anything but <laughs> but, but <laughs> people were asking for it but yeah I actually did not forget about dark wallet it just uh, in in a timeline it did not add uh, Odd, 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 anything meaningful. So, so that's that's it. And then Wasabi Wallet 2.0 2022 came out, and what it improved upon is the friction. Finally, the first Bitcoin wallet that enables anonymous user experience without friction. It's a send and receive wallet. So that's the state of the art today. If you would like to use um, Bitcoin anonymously, then you either use Join Market if you prefer security to a fully validating node, or use Wasabi Wallet if you prefer a frictionless user experience. That's where we are. So where are we going? In 2023, there is a mysterious Bitcoin wallet that is going to jump in the pool. And for the first time in Bitcoin privacy history, it will enable hardware wallet coin joins. So that's actually the announcement at the end of this talk, which I am almost there. But let me wrap up, let me summarize. Um, <sighs> Anonymity is a mathematical tool that you can use to build privacy for the individual, like building a private Bitcoin wallet. And um, Max talked about why fungibility is important. I am talking about how to make Bitcoin fungible. Well, Adoption of Bitcoin privacy technologies leads to fungibility of a currency. So, I'm going to show you how that will happen. <laughs> the first anonymous Bitcoin wallet join market. Yeah, I will not dance. <laughs> <laughs> You're free to dance. <laughs> no, I can stand up, but I will not dance. The join market developer. Look at how he sticks out of the crowd. <laughs> yeah, my anonymity set is bad. <laughs> but don't worry, next Wasabi wallet came to the party. I think I'm not going to show these videos. <laughs> you have to enact it now. <laughs> oh yeah, let's dance. <laughs> like Ethereum people. <laughs> and finally, the Bitcoin wallet that is delivering privacy for hardware wallets is none other but All right, so Trezor was supposed to be the fat guy. I can say fat <laughs> because I'm fat as well. So, oh, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and then there is an inflection point that's going to happen. And that's how we are going to achieve privacy in Bitcoin. Now, hmm. There is a red address of Samurai. <laughs> mm -hmm. Samurai users are also welcome using Bitcoin privately. <laughs> so, can you guys spot the Trezor user? Uh, the Joy Market user? Not anymore. 